Hello, bonjour. My name is Paulo de Castro Reis and I'm the executive director of CCBC. Welcome to the first Brazilian Week CCBC Online Festival, a digital event organized by the Chamber of Commerce Brazil Canada, also known as CCBC, in partnership with the Brazilian Embassy in Ottawa, the Brazilian consulates in Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver, and sponsored by Air Canada. The festival presents more than 20 webinars covering three main areas, business opportunities, innovation, and Brazilian culture. Besides, the Brazilian Week website offers free access to more than 200 cultural contents. In this particular session, we're gonna talk about Brazilian innovation hubs. There is a lot of innovation going on here in Brazil, uh, a bubbling ecosystem, just like in Canada, and a lot of opportunities for interaction between the two countries. To moderate this panel, I would like to call uh, Marie-Hélène, that is the Vice Consul and Trade Commissioner for Science, Technology and Innovation at the Consul General, Consulate General of Canada in Sao Paulo. Hello, Marie-Hélène, welcome. Thank you, Paulo. Bom te ver. Muito obrigada. Okay. Thank you. So, um, welcome everyone to this uh, session on Innovation Hubs in, in Brazil. Uh, we will start with an overview, but then we will have guests presenting different opportunities in regions in Brazil, uh, from Paraná, um, the state besides Sao Paulo and Bahia in the Northeast, as well as other opportunities in Agritech from the, um, not the Brazilian um, Conference of uh, Agriculture Confederation. So I'm pleased to have all of these guests with me today. Um, just before I wanted to show you um, a bit of what needs to be taught uh, when you look into Brazil for um, in terms of innovation hubs. Um, so Brazil is a very interesting um, place to, uh, to be right now in terms of innovation. In the past few years, we've seen a lot of increase of um, numbers of startups as well as uh, accelerators, incubators, and a lot of uh, effervescence in, uh, around VCs, uh, angels. Um, and it's very interesting to see um, the legal framework also facilitating companies who wants to um, to do business in, in in Brazil and growing these uh, technological areas. So Brazil is a huge country, um, similar as Canada in that sense. So there's very specific opportunities in the different regions, and sometimes there's a lot of similarities with some of the provinces um, in Canada. And so it's it's good to look beyond uh, the big main cities often that we hear of in Canada and look where there is specific uh, synergies for you and your company or you as a researcher who wants to do um, um, some projects here in Brazil. So we will have representatives from the, from the Paraná states and the Biopark and also from the other innovation hub from Bahia as well as from the um, um, the CNA on agriculture. So basically, when you, you know, as I mentioned, Brazil is a huge country. It's very important to understand how it works and where are the opportunities for you. Um, you need to look at where, what are the priorities sectors here, and there's many that are, have some synergies with, with Canada, and where is the government also putting some, uh, some efforts to see uh, some growth in these uh, sectors, you know, like AI, of course, uh, in Industry 4.0, in clean tech also, and um, all technologies related to the, to the um, manufacturing industries. There's also some funds available or also some, some credits um, for companies to do innovation projects. And it's important to understand that when you want to, uh, to enter the um, innovation ecosystem here. Of course, aside the um, the legal framework, it's there's very important uh, key players to to know of. Of course, there's the funding agencies, yeah, some academics, the research centers, 
the corporate ventures. There are many big companies here opening their own um, innovation um, um, opportunities with either uh, open innovation, innovation days, uh, challenges, or uh, having their own accelerators and incubators. And international companies are and Canadians um, are in are targeted also to participate in these uh, in these challenges by either MEs but also the banks. Banks have their own accelerators also here, and um, so I I've, I've put it. There's a full list also that you can see in. Um, this presentation and I invite you if you want to have more details afterward and see with your own companies and projects, you can get in touch with me and the whole theme of trade commissioners to look in your own sectors if um, if you know how to get in touch and which one would be a good a good um, a good um, partner for uh, for for your uh, company or research centers um, there was also, um, so as I mentioned, the numbers of startups have, have, have really increased also in Brazil, unicorns also in the past year and access to, uh, to either mentoring or also uh, financing for your, um, for, your com for your company. So many, many aspects to look into, um, but without further ado, I would, I would like to, Pass the word to um, to my um, to the guests we have today, so you have a better idea of what are the opportunities in two different regions. Um, before we go to the national agriculture, so first I would like to invite Matthew Spinoza, of the director of science and technology at the Fundação Araucaia from the state of Paraná. Hello, Marilene. Thanks so much for the kind invitation. Uh, bonjour à tous. Je suis ravi d'être avec vous. Uh, I will share my presentation with you. Uh, I suppose that you are seeing now. If you don't see, please interrupt me. Well, um, uh, Araucaria Foundation is a science and technology uh, and innovation funding agency. So I'm talking about on behalf of a government, the government of Paraná State. Uh, so a big picture, uh, Paraná is located in the south of Brazil, uh, just above uh, São Paulo State. Uh, some big numbers is we have the largest power generation in Brazil, uh, mainly because we have Itaipu. Itaipu is the hydroelectric generation power plant, the biggest one, uh, a largest, largest also exporter of grains in Brazil. So everybody knows that Brazil is well recognized as an exporter of grains. S uh, we have the second part in, in the country, um, um, a world reference on agrotechnology, uh, new jobs since uh, January, about 9,000 uh, new jobs. That is a number from uh, 2019, so uh, clearly uh, um, because of the pandemic, we we review some of these numbers, but we have uh, a first place in Brazil in industrial outputs uh, in the same year. Well, some drivers for the present uh, state, present the state government, uh, the state government start on 2019 and go to, to uh, 2022. A first one uh, driver is uh, Brazil has to be innovative and uh, that this innovation should focus on the creation of health and well-being, and mainly because we'd like to put in place or to, to approach uh, uh, this well-being and the wealth by science, technology, and innovation. Clearly, everybody is looking for competitiveness, and we think that this competitiveness should be balanced with sustainable development. So those are a big. Uh, these are some big big numbers. Huh? Uh, one more uh, interesting is concerning the innovative uh, environment in Brazil and mainly in Paraná. Here you have um, a, a rank that can classify the modest state, the moderate one, the followers and the leaders in Brazil as far as innovation is concerned. So Paraná is placed in the group of leaders on innovation. 
and uh, uh, we were together with Sao Paulo and Rio Grande do Sul. So uh, two of the states of the South are leaders in Brazil as far as innovation is concerned. Also, uh, taking a look on the state itself, we, we the hub of innovation for us is the same of innovation ecosystem. So uh, we have at this moment 12 uh, state innovation ecosystems. They are focused on uh, 510 society uh, concerns or, or themes. Smart cities is also uh, an important issue for us. Renewable and sustainable energy, biotech and health technology, and mainly agro-industry. The, the state itself is well recognized by his, his agro-production. So agro-industry is the, the main uh, focus of the, the, the science and technology technology we are producing at this moment. Well, all, all these area have also the support or need to be looking for digital transformation since be, because we, we understand that the major challenge for the next years for science and technology will be the 4.0 industry, 4.0 commerce, uh, 4.0 retail. So digital transformation for us should be present in all the science and technology we are looking for. Also sustainable develop, development because it is a responsible uh, uh, action, uh, attitude we should take. Uh, we also see the state organized nine regional innovation ecosystems. So from last to east, from east to west, we have uh, identified regions that have each own economic, socio-economic dynamic. So for us, we have nine uh, different uh, economic uh, uh, properties or uh, issues that have to need to, to be see, to be seen. Uh, specifically to, pro, to produce or to provide science and technology. Just a brief overview about the uh, startup innovation ecosystem in the state. Uh, they are closely related with the uh, regional innovation ecosystem. We have about uh, 1,000 startups and at this moment at, uh, about more than 10,000 employees. The main region, as far as the startup are, are located, are in the capital, the region of capital. So we have it, about 305 uh, uh, startups at this moment in, in the capital. Our strategy, how we see, how we look to foster those innovation ecosystems and also the, uh, the regions itself. Well, we put in place since the last year a concept that we call NAPIS, new r and arrangements. What is the NAPs? They are a social technical approach, a kind of Uber for science and technology, if you, if you want. And the idea is to uh, improve the mobilization and integration of regions and as assets. So it's the first level or layer here. Uh, our focus on creation uh, of health and well-being, looking for partners. So for us at this moment, the Chamber of Commerce and now the Canadian Enterprise are for us, for us are uh, uh, leaders or uh, partners that we would like to 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 see. Uh, also, we are looking uh, for a better return of investment on research and development, and for this, we are looking for the requests or the the, um, the demand, demands of the state to do to provide its own de development. So the, the the key factors for our development. Well, if you see, if you take a look here, you see basically what we call the fourth uh, Alice model. We try to organize the effort, the joint effort among government, NGOs, enterprise, and the universities or ICTs or um, research centers. Just taking a look uh, on the first layer of our NAPS or social technical approach. Uh, as far as the intellectual capital is concerned. At this moment, we have about uh, 18,000 PhDs that belongs to the system of uh, university system, basically. Uh, we have a, a density of 40 PhDs per uh, uh, 100,000 inhabitants, about five, uh, five, 500,000 students in the entire system of universities uh, public and private, 
private universe. As far as the uh, infrastructure, infrastructure of science technology is concerned, we have all uh, uh, this infrastructure spread in all the territory of the state. And we are, we are uh, when we talk about the infrastructure, we are talking about a system that concerns uh, seven state universities, four federal universities, one federal institutes, all of them are multi campus uh, universities, and more than a dozen private universities and research centers. We have more or less 300 programs for PhD and Master in Science. So our priorities for internationalization partnership in, with Canada, we have chosen some regions or countries to be partnered and Canada is a priority one for us. Uh, we have, and those are the main areas, is not limited to the, those areas, uh, but uh, for Canada, we think that agro-industry, biotech, and health tech, tech technology, always concerning also digital transformation, sustainable development, should be the focus, but we are open for the other uh, suggestions. Uh, in the last uh, two weeks ago, we signed a memorandum of understanding with my text that also is a first step, thanks to the Embassy of Brazil on Ottawa, and also we're starting now uh, Aceleragro. Aceleragro is a program for choosing on startups for agrotech. And it's a kind of network we are trying to establish with the California, you, uh, partners in California, and also the Canada. Uh, thanks to the help of Ambassador uh, Pedro Boyle that helped us a, a, a lot to establish this network. So those are my, our a brief overview of Paraná State. Uh, and I think that uh, you went back the, the, the mic. Thank you. Thank you, Marcio. And it's good to see, as I've mentioned, around Brazil, there's many opportunities and synergy, and it's good to look um, in some state like Paraná. We've already seen that there, there are many synergies also with the province of, um, of Quebec. Um, and others. And on that, I would like to invite Vitor Donaduzzi, Business Director of the Biopark in Paraná. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation on uh, this festival. Uh, thank you for hearing. I will show you a brief presentation on uh, Biopark that we have. I think you are seeing my video by now. Okay, so uh, I am talking on uh, Biopark we have. Uh, I am, my name is Victor Donaduzzi and I am the business director on Biopark. Uh, Biopark is a park accredited by Separtech. Uh, we are a member of IASP. This is one of uh, this is one entity that uh, shows that we are a technological park and we have met all the needs uh, for reaching this. This uh, this seems that uh, this uh, say that we are a park that uh, provides all that is necessary for startups to uh, grow up and be successful. Uh, we are also a member of Unprotech. Uh, our mission is to innovate for life, and our vision is to be a global reference as innovation ecosystem on demand side. This is important. We have seen a lot of uh, technological parts, parts built on uh, um, supply side, but uh, we are we want to build our our uh, technological park on the demand side, and these are the values that uh, rule us on the daily basis. Uh, Biopark is a, an innovation ecosystem for life. We are located on Paraná State uh, that Marcio, Mr. Marcio have talked just before and uh, show. We are on the west side on that uh, part of Paraná, on the city of Toledo. We are uh, around, uh, I think it's about 15 kilometers away from the city and near the airport. We have more than 5 million square meters of area to build this whole uh, ecosystem. 
Uh, our objectives is to improve the employment on the area with, by high performance jobs focused on uh, knowledge, technology and innovation. Uh, we want to be a place to study, work, live and have fun on the same, the same place. So uh, join uh, the quality of life. Uh, we want to do the industrial development on the region uh, by attracting startups and also com uh, consolidate companies and also some industries. And uh, we want to do the technological innovation, uh, transforming the region, the, the, the Toledo region, the West region is a agricultural uh, region. Uh, we have kind of the 10 uh, uh, biggest um, <laughs> co uh, cooperative uh, industries in Brazil. And uh, we are one of the largest uh, producer uh, areas on, on the, the country. And uh, we want to bring from this, um, from this reality for a more research and development and innovation hub side. So we want to improve the, um, the innovative uh, of the, this area. Our domain are focused on health, information technology and agribusiness. Uh, we uh, came from a pharmaceutical company, the biggest one pharmaceutical company producer of uh, medicines on Brazil are located in Paraná. We, we uh, are on the same, uh, we came from the same foundation. Mr. Luis Donaduzzi is the founder of the pharmaceutical company, Prati Donaduzzi, and also the Biopark. And uh, because of this, we have some synergy that we can improve. We have also a hospital that are coming to, to Biopark to uh, improve better um, jobs on this. And also we have some uh, medical school on uh, UTFPR that I will, UFPR that I will talk just a little bit later that is also on health side. Uh, we have a lot of companies that are uh, located inside the territory by now, and they are on information technology. We have a lot of developers on this area. And the thing on agribusiness is, uh, is about the being a productive re region and uh, having all these uh, cooperatives that uh, we have in a, in a little bit far from here. So. Uh, we can do this and we have this synergy that we can uh, put together. The ecosystem was based on a triple leg, um, triple leg uh, thing. It's about innovation on uh, the R&D um, institution that we have. This business side that is on uh, the companies that are located inside the, the park and also education. We have by now I think about uh, three universities and more two uh, institutions on uh, education on, located inside the biopark by now. One is uh, it's ours and we have also the governmental uh, ones. <clears throat> um, these are biopark as it shows by now. This building on the right of your screen uh, is the building of Federal University of Paraná. This building was, uh, was made and donated from the couple Carmen and Luis Donaduzzi, the, the founders of Biopark, and it's operating since the early of 2018. This building have a medical school on uh, UFPR that is more disputed from, of, than the um, park, the, the, the university on Curitiba, that is the, the the mother of the UFPR. And this happens because uh, of the quality that uh, are being applied on Biopark. The second building uh, that uh, I am showing is the Biopark Education, is the, the one that I am sitting by now. And uh, it's done, uh, it uh, was invested around 15 uh, million reais by this the same couple. 
and uh, we are operating since February this year. The other building you can see on the back is the distribution center from Prati Donaduz. I will talk just a little bit on uh, the next slides. Uh, this is what the hospital that I was talking. Um, it's a health and hospital complex. It's inspected to, be, to have an investment of 55 million reais. Uh, it's projected to, to do some 40, 400 jobs on the first year of operation. And uh, is intended to have a specialization on burn care and also on promoting quality of life and diseases prevention. They will, um, they will focus on this area. Uh, this is the distribution center on Prati Donaduzi. Prati Donaduzi is the pharmaceutical company that I was talking just before. They have this distribution center that is being constructed by now, is being built. Um, it was invested 20, around 23 million reais and, in, is, and is intended to be finished on November this year. It's an area of uh, 11 hundred eleven thousand and three hundred square meters uh, and it's uh, pro and it's intended to start in the next months uh, these are the companies that are inside the biopark by now we have some 60 companies uh, until july this year i have not the numbers of, of um, consolidated from august and uh, so far we have created 273 jobs from these companies and we have a combined combined income of the last uh, 12 months of 5.3 million reais from these com these uh, companies that are inside companies and startups um, here are some other um, in initiatives that we have inside biopark one is the biopark education uh, Biopark Education is a university made by Biopark. We have so far three degree prog programs on uh, pharmaceuticals or medicine, and uh, one on business administration and one on IT. And we have another 10 courses on specialization programs. We have also some fine cheese laboratory that we have done some partnership with CEFQ uh, from Canada. And we have invested around 300,000 uh, 300, reais on this project. We have a addictive manufacturing laboratory and we have invested 182,000 reais on this. Uh, this is done with, in partnership with UTFPR, is uh, the technological, university, uh, technological Federal University on Paraná. Uh, we have also have inside the biopark the laboratory of biomaterials and bio, uh, bio and biosciences. Uh, we have done an investment on of uh, 585,000 reais on this, and this was done uh, with partnership with University of Laval, uh, LBB, uh, Hospital Erasto Gartner is a big hospital in Curitiba. UFPR, the Federal University of Paraná, the, the, one, the same one that have this building uh, sitting on Biopark, and UTFPR that I have talked just before. These are some of our institutional, part, institutional partners and uh, the business partner, partner that we have so far on Biopark. Thank you for your time. Here are my uh, contacts if uh, somebody wants to talk just a little before. Thank you so much, Victor. Um, I think for sure between Canada and Brazil, there are many opportunities and synergy in the, um, in the biotech and health sector. And that's what you've presented for even more. Thank you. Uh, Thank you I would much. like now to ask Daniel Mota from the Senai Cimatec in Bahia. Um, Daniel is the Innovation and Technology Manager. Thank you. 
Thank you, Marie-Hélène. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, thank you also to Victor, Matthew, and Gabriela that are here in the panel with me. So let me share my screen and start the presentation. I think I did something wrong here. Just one second. Yeah, share the screen now. Can you please confirm that you are seeing my screen? Yes, very well. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, first, CIMATEC. CIMATEC stands for Manufacturing Technology Integrated Campus. So what we believe that is really important when we talk about integration, when we talk about innovation, is the integration process. So uh, I want to present to you what we do here first, uh, regarding location in portfolio, we are located in northeast region of Brazil, as you see. Uh, but it's important to mention that we were talking about technology innovation, right? So there is no frontiers. So actually, when we see the, what we have achieved, uh, the industrial side, uh, we can support and we are supporting uh, different companies all over Brazil and even abroad. Uh, our three main, main business uh, process that we have are uh, the research, develop, and innovation, even from product and process. That's our, uh, I, I would say that actually the most, what we do here is related to research, develop, and innovation. Also, we perform services like testing, engineering service, consulting, technology development. So we do service as well and training and education. For those who already uh, have heard about Senai, Senai has, has more than 78 years of existence and has well uh, a long history in the training process. But CIMATEC, CIMATEC was started in 2002 uh, in the region I just presented to you. But what we do here, actually 80% of what we do is related to research, develop and innovation. But we also have master and doctoral degree programs uh, in our in-house. I will talk about the integration process. You're always gonna, when I mention, you're always gonna see uh, that integration is part of our name and, uh, and part of our process. Uh, right now we have a, a specific two sites. One side, the first one in the top of the screen is the CIMATEC that was launched in 2002. Right now we have four buildings in this area with 35,000 square meters and over 150 million US dollars investments. Different competence areas, again, related to the integration of the competence areas, I will talk about that later, and more than 750 employees that work in this side. And last year, November last year, we just launched the first phase of our second side. That is located not too far from where we are right now, 35 uh, kilometers from where we are. And the idea is that we have a site in an industrial uh, location. For example, it's nearby every industry in Salvador City. And actually, it's in Camacity City and other city by in the metropolitan region of Salvador. And uh, we want to increase the technology readiness level, the TRL. So right now, we, have, we are occupying 65,000 square meters, but we have an overall area of 4 million square meters. So uh, here, you, you can see the whole process on where, what we are, I mean, the, the whole vision of what, what, what we will have at CIMATEC Park, and only this part actually was launched. So if you see here, only this part was launched last year. There is a lot to be done, and we expect to have uh, companies from Canada and all over the world ca that can cooperate with us. I will talk a little bit later about the models of cooperation that we have. But here, actually, we can support agribusiness, smart cities, automotive industries, energy, and other universities, and of course, bringing companies to this uh, uh, ecosystem. So that's uh, our vision for CIMATEC. So again, integration. I mean, uh, when you, you ask what is CIMATEC, CIMATEC is a technical school, is a university campus, and is a technology center. So and when we talk about research, develop, innovation, we are talking about all this together. I mean, uh, we have developing projects uh, with many companies. And what we do is that we get the best from the university, the best from the technology center, and the best from the technical school to develop the products and the process that we uh, are to achieve. So we also, with that model, 
we also increase uh, the abilities and the skills, the skills that we have uh, for the students. For example, if you are a student from technical school or from the university, if you are a master student or a PhD student, uh, being part of the project that is actually applied in the industry, it, it will increase your skills, not only the hard skills, but also your soft skills. So that's really important and we consider the integrated model very special for uh, what we do here at CIMATEC. So we have mainly four ways to collaborate worldwide. One is what we call .tech. .tech is when we cooperate with uh, uh, institutions abroad uh, in order to transfer technology, or to transfer to them, or to transfer to us. And this .tech is the cooperation uh, if we have a project, and I will just present one example of a project that we have a cooperation with institutions abroad. But also we are university campus, right? So we also cooperate in the education side. That's what we call .edu. So we also have collaboration between students and professors from our areas, and then we support these uh, abroad with other universities. We also su uh, support the governments abroad. Uh, that's what we call .org. For example, there are many uh, uh, companies or many countries, sorry, in the, in the South America that ask for us our help, also Africa, and then we support them developing technology over there. So we support also governmental cooperation. And last but not least, what we call .com is when we support the Brazilian industry abroad. I mean, for example, if we have industry like Petrobras and Petrobras wants to go to Tanzania to start digging for oil and gas, and then we go there and support this kind of action for the Brazilian company abroad. So these are the top four ways of collaborating and we are looking forward to have one at least of this collaboration with uh, Canada companies and institutions. So uh, here, for example, you can see a uh, sample. I just brought here some uh, institutions for the area that I call .tech and that we cooperate. So we, you're gonna see that there is a lack over here that is related to Canadian institutions. So I think that we can put some red marks on this area as well. But if you go to Europe, we have a cooperation with Fraunhofer Institutes, DFKI. If you go to Sweden, Portugal, Netherlands, United States, and also South America. So uh, these are the kind of collaboration that we actually start to develop and we are looking to have these, as I said before, with Canada. So uh, here you can see uh, the areas that we have developed in the expertise. Uh, there are uh, different areas, and as I, as I, I mentioned again, uh, the integration is one thing that we do. Uh, and for example, one thing is to develop of product and equipment. So we do since mechanical design simulation, but we also can get to prototype. And with Simatech Park, uh, we can get to uh, really large scales prototype. And then also precision mechanics, material science, but also we work with automation and robotics, uh, system integration, advanced manufacturing, electric and electronic systems, autonomous robotics. Uh, software, not only for autonomy, but also for software development, artificial intelligence and user computing, uh, process optimization, recycling, uh, new manufacturing process, technological roof, uh, pilot plants, uh, again, when I mentioned about CIMATEC part, large scale tests, simulation, energy efficiency and logistics. And also uh, we work very hard on health. We have many projects that we have developed uh, during this phase of COVID. Uh, and then we have developed many like PCR tests, like uh, ventilator. We just launched uh, last week a ventilator that actually, I don't know if you heard the VTAL from NASA. Uh, they launched, they developed in 37 years, and we are one of the licensees here in Brazil, and we already have put that in the market. I mean, we already go through the visa process. But health is a really important area, so biotech, clinical trials, diagnosis tests, so there are pharmaceutical products, so different uh, process that we develop. And then, of course, we consider uh, supporting competence that go through all of these areas of expertise like IoT, uh, we have five uh, HPCs, five supercomputers here at CIMATEC, 
and big data as well. So these are the main area of expertise. Please, if you have any uh, way and any idea to cooperate, feel free to contact me. So uh, what we do mainly is that first, we need to understand the problem. And then we go to the companies, to the industry, understand the problems. And then we may find partners to collaborate with. So it might be another industry, it might be a science and technology institute, but it also might be a university. And then we collaborate, uh, we establish a collaboration, mainly with the company and the institutions. And then we go for the financial way to uh, how to finance the project. And then we have many different uh, process that we can go through to get money to develop the process together. So the project together. And then we find the perfect equation for this uh, uh, process. And then we develop the, the RNG process the RNG uh, project, and then we deliver that to the company. So that's the main direction model that we developed here at CIMATEC and how we see that a collaboration and result can come out of the research develop innovation process. So some examples about projects that we have developed in the expertise area. So we have here, for example, uh, the use of artificial intelligence and computer vision for uh, not only minery, but also for maintenance, for uh, normally detection, but also for oil and gas. So actually, artificial intelligence can use everywhere, right? So uh, we have developed algorithms and also process with machine learning, deep learning, and all these are artificial intelligence techniques to go and to develop projects in these areas. But also we develop uh, a, a projects in augmented reality, so for maintenance, manufacturing, and all the areas that is related to augmented reality. And uh, that, that's one project that's called Flatfish. That was, uh, that, that's, this project just started in 2013, actually. Uh, it was, a, it is a shell project that right now, uh, Saipen, an Italian company, uh, just licensed the, the technology. So we develop a AUV, an autonomous underwater vehicle uh, from scratch, and then, uh, I think that maybe, maybe January, February, in the first semester, first trimester of next year, they will launch in the market the Flatfish project. So the AUV and this is, you can use that, that actually was developed for Shell. So the idea is to use for oil and gas, but it can use in everywhere, like for uh, uh, environmental purpose as well. So there are other ways to develop this kind of thing. And uh, the technology that we develop can be uh, use it in other areas. Uh, so I I don't know if I ran out of my time. So thank you very very much, Mahi and Linda again for the the opportunity and to to share uh, these with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel. I think with all of these area the area of expertise that you have mentioned, for sure we should be able to find you a, a great great partners in Canada. To work right. together. Um, obrigada. Now I would like to ask Gabriela Coser, uh, she's an eco economic analyst at the Brazilian Confederation of Agriculture and Livestock to present the, um, the innovation in the agriculture sector. Thank you. Thank you, Mahielen. I'm very glad to present a little bit about agribusiness here today. I think uh, a lot of my partners already uh, touch it in the subject, but I, I think I can add some indicators and some information. I will start to share my screen. Just tell me if it's working, please. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. Yes, it's good. So uh, first, I would like to to say that I am an economist in the Brazilian. Confederation of Agriculture and Livestock. So we have also in the Confederation uh, a specific sector that works only with innovation. And if you have more doubts or uh, want to ask some specific about project that we are running, I can send, uh, I can share the contact of the, the team. So we are the, the largest organization of farmers here in Brazil. It's important to say also that we work with all kinds of uh, farming production systems uh, for smallholders, medium and large. So we are talking about a view 
of the agribusiness sector in general in Brazil, not only for uh, one kind of production system. And we also work with uh, all kinds of uh, products. For example, have, uh, we've been working with livestock, with uh, grains, with uh, fruit. So there is a lot of uh, knowledge and expertise to share with Canadian partners. We are kind of similar as the farm bureau in Canada. So we are the, we do the work to try to connect what the farmers are uh, needs with a uh, private sector dev development and also to work with government to promote uh, public policies and improve regulation and how we can address challenges in the, the agribusiness sector in Brazil with all those partners and all those players. So, okay. So this is an example of a program that is, uh, is led lead by the, the innovation team. They are trying to understand what are the, the needs of uh, uh, farmers in Brazil and trying to connect uh, technology and innovation to solve those problems. So this is an opportunity for the sector. So talking about agribusiness in Brazil, uh, it's important to, to state that not always uh, innovation in agribusiness is visible. So when we see those pictures, we imagine that we are not, uh, for example, developed, but to produce this quantity and this and the quality and to produce with quality, we need a, not, a lot of innovation in the field. So we are, tr we are talking about the seeds, about the machineries, and about all those innovations that is not clear. We are not only uh, innovative when we talk about dig digital transformation. Digital tr transformation is very important for the sector, but it's not uh, the only innovative and not innovative um, opportunity. And it is not the only uh, innovation technology that we, are, we are being working and that we need. So just to see that uh, different, uh, different uh, regions of Brazil, different kind of production systems, and this all, this all, 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 all pictures show that uh, we need, and we we do a, a lot of things. So, here about the innovation hubs, just to prepare, uh, we talk as a private uh, sector, as a view of the private sector, but it's important to state that. Embrapa, which is the Brazilian uh, Research Corporation, was uh, founded probably almost 50 years ago and is the main responsible for development in agriculture in Brazil. So what Embrapa did in the past and is still doing, they, uh, they have a lot of researchers and uh, working in each uh, state and, each, uh, and in each production system to develop solutions, to adopt technologies, and focus on the, the to focus on to increase yields and also to develop sustainable uh, technologies. So, what Embrapa did, they invested a lot. They um, they have, for example, different branches where, where they work. For example, here I can talk about the agricultural practices and system that maybe is that the part that I said that is not always visible, but is there is a lot of innovative innovation inside of it uh, because we need to improve fertilization, pest and disease, and and most uh, when we talk the agribusiness in Brazil, we are talking about improvement of the soil because it's not it's not always possible to produce. Uh, in a specific kind of soil. So they work to improve, to develop technology. So you can, uh, you can have uh, grains, for example, in a region that without the, the research that Embrapa did will, will be not possible to produce. So here I put the link so it's possible to understand a little bit more about uh, Embrapa work and also check for the technolog technological solutions that they have. So, for example, this is a very uh, engaging and very fascinating uh, topic that Embrapa is leading in, and probably Brazil is one, one of the, is, uh, uh, is also uh, the country is a lead in this kind of production system. It's called the integrated, sorry, 
integrated crop and for, uh, livestock forestry. And this is a kind of production system with a lot of technology that is, okay, again, not visible, but it works to reduce the, to, to it uh, adds, for example, mitigation and all those kinds of practice that reduce the impact of uh, carbon emissions, for example. So it's very interesting. I think this, uh, we are working to uh, increase the use of this practice in, in Brazil, but it's already uh, very profitable, very interesting and very good for the environment. And it's one of the main, uh, one of the main uh, research agenda developed by uh, Embrapa. So here is an example for the, for uh, they, they have this decentralized unit among the territory and they have projects that uh, aims to address the challenge of rich region. For example, they have a unit focused on the, the, the milk production. They have one of uh, working the Amazon to improve the, the, ex, the SIE, for example, production, increase the yields for the, for the, the farmers. And very interesting case that I, that I said is that Embrapa Cerrado, which is here in close to Brasilia, they were the researchers, they were the Embrapa unit that enabled the production of grains in the Cerrado bioma. And what does it mean? It means that almost 40% of grains produced in Brazil right now comes from the Cerrado region. So without the technology and the research, um, developed by Embrapa, probably will not be one of the main leaders uh, of main leaders in the world in terms of production and exports of grains. So when we talk about research and development, they also have a great work um, to map the innovation next system. And as all the panelists already said, uh, universities are great partners here and the Embrapa is working with uh, all those university to develop uh, innovation for ag agribusiness sector. Here's another maybe uh, just a as a reference when we talk about uh, agri-tech ecosystem, Brapa is also working uh, to understand and develop those sector. So if a Canadian company of Canadian partner want to talk about agri-tech also, they, we have in Brazil Already, we have already established ecosystem and we have opportunities, a lot of opportunities here. So just to finish, um, my time is almost over. I think it's uh, relevant to say, uh, when we, we talk about agribusiness in Brazil, uh, we always want to present uh, the data and the demand that is, uh, is made by the forest code, for example. When we talk about the, the development of agribusiness in Brazil, it's important to state, to state that uh, a, a huge part of the land use, uh, a great part of the, the land uh, in, inside the farmers, you need to protect, you need to cons conserve, and you need to have a legal reserve in, inside those properties. So for example, here, when we talk about the Cerrado, even with those, uh, incredible numbers and incredible investments and uh, we still are able to protect and conserve our uh, environment so there are a really strict and uh, uh, legislation that is being applied in Brazil for almost uh, 12 years so we are able to produce with quality with uh, quantity and while preserving the, the environment so this is uh, just to, to enter to, to show a little bit of some indicators that we can see here that since the, 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 uh, the development of uh, establishment of Embrapa, we increase our production of grains and fibers more than five times, but the area was increased only by almost two times. And this is most explained by the, the quality, the research and the adaptability of the, the seeds that we were able to, to put in the, in the soil and also uh, shows that we increased our yields of, by almost three times. So here I would, I would not, I don't have time to talk, but is a, a little bit of the data that show the power 
and the, the, huge, uh, the huge relevance of the agribusiness sector to develop of the country. And I'm, later we can talk a little bit about specific sectors and for example, soybean data, poultry and all those things and companies that want to understand a little bit more of those sectors and how to invest, how to make partners. Uh, we, are have, we have a great team, a huge team to, to share information. That's all. Thank you, Manila. Thank you, Gabriela. Um, I think already in the in the in the agri food sector, there's there are some um, some work done between Canada and Brazil, and more more recently there was an MOU signed between Embrapa and its equivalent in in Canada to foster even more uh, research. Um, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, there is none in the Bati Papu, but please free if you want to um, have some of your answers, uh, question answered, please put your question there. I do have a question for the panelists. Um, what would be your advice, your tips or recommendation for a Canadian company or institution that wants to create these new links with um, Brazil. Um, we often hear processes here are complicated. It's always, you know, always good to already know somebody that can open a few doors. Um, I was wondering, Gabriela, Daniel, or uh, Victor, if you had some um, some tips that you would like to um, to share with us today. May I start? Yes, um, please. The the one tip that I have in uh, the Brazilian ecosystem is uh, it's uh, kind of hard um, to understand all the leg legislation that we have. Uh, I came from the pharmaceutical company, pharmaceutical industry, and uh, you need to understand the times, the investments that you need to do, and the ways of doing this on Brazil. If you come by yourself and just try to do it, uh, maybe you spend a lot of time and a lot of money in here, but uh, we at Biopark, at least, uh, we want to um, help on this uh, harness and uh, we can uh, teach the way of doing this uh, on the right manner with less time and less money. Uh, and I'm talking on the right way of doing this. Uh, I mean, Brazil, you, you obviously talk about the Brazilian way of doing the jeitinho brasileiro, but uh, we also can do this on on a regular basis, on a serious work, and to do this easier for the the ones that are wants to come. This is what we can do and what we can help. So um, if you the the one tip that I I want to say is find a good partner that understand the Brazilian. Uh, market the Brazilian uh, uh, legal way of doing this uh, and in this matter you will uh, for sure be successful on here and the opportunities that you have are huge uh, we need technology we need people to work on uh, technology and uh, innovation things so uh, we will thank for the, the ones that wants to come and are here to help. Thank you, Victor. Danielle, do you have, do you want to add something? Yeah, sure, but I think Gabriela wants to speak. Gabriela, if you want to go first, please feel okay. free to, to speak. Very, thank you, Danielle. <laughs> thank you, Marilyn. I can see on my screen. Yeah, uh, I've, is, well, two months ago, I had another conversation with Israeli companies about how to to sell technology, for example, there we are talk, there, that time we are talking about uh, agritechs. So how uh, Israeli companies could sell technology for Brazilian farmers. So uh, in my slides, I have a, 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 an image where we show that we have uh, technologies inside the farm, before the farm gate and after the farm gate. So as Vitor said, you need to understand what kind of technology or solution you're trying to sell or trying to have partners here in Brazil, understand uh, this technology, understand if uh, you can find those partners to have already a, a established uh, distribution channel because farmers need to already know someone who already applied the, the, this technology or for example, uh, they also need 
sometimes uh, funding to buy this technology. And it is the same thing about where, when you try to, uh, to have, uh, not to sell, but to have a partner here in Brazil. So you need to find someone who is already established and already uh, is already know in the market. So it will be easier to have, for example, if you are com a company, it will be easier to find funding with a banking system or with capital markets. Or if you are trying to sell uh, directly to the farmer, you, you need to have a Brazilian company or uh, a company that is already established in the market is already know. So these are, I think, the maybe, um, maybe good ideas and uh, how to do business when we talk about uh, agribusiness. I would like just to add, sorry, but just to add that uh, I, I agree uh, with Victor and Gabriela, and I think that it's important. I would add that it not only the legal uh, aspect is important to understand, but all the financial aspect is, uh, is important that you understand. But I, I would I would like to emphasize more the good part of coming here. I mean, uh, there would be a, uh, one thing that is different over here is that uh, our market um, our market is big. So many companies does not need to go abroad because our local market is enough for them. So I think that would be a really nice opportunity to think about Brazil as a special market. And I think that's actually when we say that you need to understand the legal aspects, the financial aspect is mainly every country that you go, you need to understand because every aspect is, is specific for the country. So uh, I think that is important that you find a good partner, partner as Victor just said, that, that knows to, get, to give you a soft landing process and then you know how to establish. If you want to start as a startup and you have many uh, process like Biopark, like Victor just presented, but also Simatech Park, and then you, you can get this kind of uh, support in the institutions uh, that are here already and then can give you uh, a reduction in the cost. Instead of you to go to give big investments, you can start uh, in the soft lending uh, infrastructures that we all ha already have established. So, but the, the idea is that you, you, you need to look at the market and I think that you have a great market to, to go through. Thank you so much. So, yeah. Yes, we, uh, May I just make, uh, add something. I think that in Brazil today, we are living a very nice moment to, to do business based on science, technology, and innovation. So uh, half of these states in Brazil have agencies organized to provide some kind of soft lending, as Daniel uh, suggests. Um, Cematec is one nice example. Biopike uh, is also a very nice example. So we can have partners or find partners in Brazil. It's a nice moment and easily moment to do so. Okay, and uh, I suggest to work with the embassy. <laughs> so I give you back, Maria Elena, <laughs> the task. <laughs> so I, I'm sure that uh, the embassy is doing a very nice job trying to identify those agencies in each state that can provide a kind of soft landing for the enterprise or the, the, the academic uh, institutions and so far, okay? Thank you, Massimo, and th thank you all, yes, partner. Part, finding the right partner is key. We agree. Having some 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 possibility to soft land in Brazil uh, is also very important. And yes, we're here to support the Canadian companies and institution looking into uh, into uh, coming to, to 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 Brazil for um, either part uh, R and D innovation or investment or trade. So. Um, Thank you so much. Always really insightful to uh, to have your views and about all of these opportunities in Brazil. I would like also to thank the CCBC for organizing this week of presentation and to uh, to showcase what Brazil has to offer to um, to Canadians. Muito obrigada. Merci beaucoup. Merci au revoir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Obrigado. Thank you. Bye bye. Merci. Au revoir. Obrigado. Obrigado.